Hello everyone. So, last video I left us with quite a mess. And while it did make the enemy more alive, it is going to be a little harder to read with all these transitions and stuff if you ever wanted to come back and, and change something up. So today we're going to go over and we're going to make something more like this. Something it's a lot cleaner. And we're going to be utilizing what is called an... I I think they're called action shortcuts let's just see uh, or it's just a shortcut yeah an action shortcut so yeah we're going to make it look a little more like this so first off let's go back to our enemy log here and we have a lot of stuff going on here and you know these lines that are crossing through these other things these are mainly what make it confusing is when it's crossing through and you're like, uh, which line's which? Now, you can do stuff like change the color, right? You can you can make this one red, so you can know that that one's that. But we can also just do this. We can, for instance, let's just right click on Sleeping Idle, and way down at the bottom, you can see Create a Shortcut, and we'll create a shortcut. And when you do you get a box, it's a smaller one. It starts smaller anyway. You can make it bigger as you as you wish. And you'll also notice that when you click off of it that it has a, a dotted box around it. And it is a it is literally a shortcut of this action. It is exactly the same as this action. Even the transitions are still the same and everything and by and let's just change something just to show so let's show a particle we'll just do sparks whatever and we'll hit ok we did that on the shortcut now let's click on the sleeping and boom it appeared on the sleeping let's get rid of it from the sleeping and boom it is gone from the shortcut so these shortcuts are a way that we can kind of move the program out a little bit, clean up some of these things for stuff that you don't really need to to vi revisit. So let's grab a shortcut for all of these three that are linking to hit by player. So we're going to grab this as a shortcut, move it up here. We're going to grab wake up as a shortcut. We're going to move it right here. So let's do that. Let's just move it a little bit out of the way. Also, these things, they kind of stick on the grid. Grid. If you ever need to not get them on the grid, you can hold control and you can free move them. Just if that's kind of what you want to do. I'll just keep mine on the grid. It's not perfect, but it looks fine. So the other thing that we need is these are all... So these lines are the ones that I'm really... That are just getting in my way. And they all go to hit by player. So let's create a shortcut for hit by player and let's bring it up here. And we can color code these if we want. So hit by player, you would know. Let's just do that. Hit by player is going to be yellow. And notice it turned them both yellow. So now we can see that hit by player, this is the shortcut for it. We can more easily see that. And so now we're going to... The transitions I'm pretty sure are the same. Yeah, they are. So we're just going to copy one transition, copy, and we're going to paste the link. We're going to paste the link, and we're going to paste the link here. And we're going to just, I mean, this part really doesn't matter, but you can make it a little nice and cleaner if you want. And so now we can delete these links. And it does the exact same thing. It is literally as if you were linking them just how we had them. And to prove that, let's just go to play here. And all these links we're doing is saying that you can get hit while you're waking up, you can get hit while you're sleeping, or you can get hit while the enemy is back going back to sleep. Well, the easiest way for us to test is just to test if it gets hit while he's sleeping. And it does. And it can get hit when it goes back to sleep. It can get hit when it's waking up. And everything is exactly the same. 
Now in my original one, I also created a shortcut to moving player, and then I just had the link go from this to moving player. However, what I've just kind of been realizing is that this actually isn't in our way. So this looks fine. If anything, I'll just move it like that. Yeah. So this part looks uncluttered now, and it does the exact same thing. It is a little trickier because you have to remember, okay, what is already, what are my transitions already on wake up? And you can see you have to be aware of these because these transitions are affected, are, will affect the state in whatever way. And then also, if there's a new transition that you're adding, it will affect this one. So you do have to be careful for some things, but if you're using it as a cleanup method for your code to make look nice, this is definitely a way to do it. And while we're here, it's a shorter video. Last video I said we were going to fix our sword bullet to not do this on an object's wall detection, to not have a little pause before it disappears. And so since we're here, Let's go to our transition and we're going to move this contact with wall up and then I'm pretty sure it defaults to and still. We're going to change that to or. So or a wall detection or time passes. So we have all our contacts first and then if anything it's going to be the time pass. Let's test that out and we got it. All right. So yeah, that's that. We got to talk about action shortcuts, cleaned up our bullet a little bit, and we will go from there.